This podcast is brought to you by Blackbee Ministries International. To find out more, visit blackbee.org. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the Richard Blackaby Leadership Podcast. My name is Sam, and I'm your host, and helping take our leadership to the next level. We have a great conversation today with Mike Lynch. He is a father, a husband, and the senior pastor of North Star Church in Kennesaw, Georgia, and passionate about athletics. He serves as the pitching coach for the Alatoona High School and the chaplain for the Bucks football team and frequently speaks at various athletic events. He's also the host of the leadership podcast, Lynch with a Leader. He is an insightful leader, and I hope you're able to walk away from this conversation with uh, some life-changing action points. As always, we'll leave links uh, to Mike, MikeLynch.com. You can find out more about what he's doing and uh, the great podcast that he has. And with that, I'll turn it over to Richard. Well, as you know, one of my favorite things to do on this podcast is to have a special guest come in and uh, share insights on leadership that they have gleaned. And of course, there's so many different ways to lead, so many different uh, places to lead and circumstances to lead through. And there's always so many lessons that come from that. But uh, certainly it's a privilege for me just over the years to have met uh, many wonderful leaders in the business world and the church world. And uh, our guest today is no exception. This is uh, Mike Lynch is with us today and uh, a pastor in North Atlanta area. I'll let him tell us more about that. But Mike, welcome to the podcast today. Well, it is my honor to get to be on here with you guys. And I'm a, and I feel like it's a radio call-in show. I'm an avid listener <laughs> and have been listening to your podcast since the since you came out with it past few years. And it has been such a joy to uh, get to enjoy you on uh, on leadership, and it's great honor to be on here today. Well, thank you, and you're and uh, Mike has a great podcast as well, and uh, does a lot of things with leaders in his own right. And uh, I, I've just really been delighted to see how God is using him. He is a pastor, but he's a lot more than that. And so, Mike, maybe just to begin, for those who might not know you, uh, tell us a bit about your your journey, your leadership journey. How what you what are the highlights of what you've done so far, and where God's brought you to today? You know, I think we we live life going forward, and we understand it looking backward. I think looking back on it, and the rearview mirror is getting bigger now. But looking back on it, you know. I moved to Kennesaw, Georgia in 1991 out of Liberty. I played baseball up at Liberty, graduated, moved to moved to Kennesaw on the fast track to success. You know, life in church in the 90s was you're at a church for a couple of years, then you move to a bigger church, you move to a bigger church. And so yeah. I came down here as a youth pastor. I told my wife, I remember telling her, we won't be here long. <laughs> just, just, a stop on, just a stop on the journey. And uh, that youth ministry, I did it for five and a half years, had a great run. And then uh, uh, my pastor growing up, Ike Reichard, who was at New Hope on the south side of Atlanta, Ike uh, was in a transitional time in his life. And I said, let's plant a church together. And that was in the fall of 96. And we started a church called North Star in January of 1997. And that's where I've been ever since. So I have lived in this community since 1991. So uh, I've been, I've been here a minute and we did, we missed the train that came through. (laughs) And so here we, we find ourselves all these years later, but love what we do. So my journey really has been contained to two zip codes here in, in Northwest Atlanta, but as you know, in leadership, every day is a new challenge and every day is a new adventure. And, uh, but it's been a great, great journey. Wow, and I don't I don't think I realized you had started that with Ike. Yeah. I, I, did, I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah. so we started it. We started he had left New Hope and gone to First Atlanta for a short, short season and was just trying to figure out what he was going to do. And I said, Hey, let's do a church for people who don't go to church. And mm. uh, that was our, that was that was sort of the pre lots of church planning movement. And we did everything wrong. And God <laughs> blessed it anyways. So wow. we've had a great, great time. Now, Mike, you, I know you have had a focus, certainly at least in the last number of years, on leaders, and you do some, you have some unique ministries uh, to them. I mean, you have a podcast, and you also have a, a, a monthly event and, and sure. outreach that I think is very interesting. What Tell us about that, and, t- and tell us why you, you have done that. 
So it's so interesting because this is where our lives interconnected. Of course, I knew of your dad growing up on the south side of Atlanta and going through experiencing God as a college student uh, back at Liberty. But in 2014, I came through one of your workshops and had been approached by a leader here in Atlanta uh, with a great organization about doing some coaching for him. And I did not feel qualified to do that. So I went online to look for an opportunity and I saw the uh, coaching intensives that you guys put on a weekend coaching through Blackaby and went to that. And it, and I honestly, Richard, it changed my life. And it, mm -hmm. it um, was at a season in my life that I was really searching for what am I going to be and who am I going to be? And, you know, we all have those parts of our journey and dove into that. And through through a process, I did the three week, the the three day event and then signed up to do the year long coaching and yeah. went through that process. And I in a in a in a meeting with Brett Pyle really had a breakthrough in my own personal life and in my own journey. Mm -hmm. And I remember in reading one of the books um the heart of spiritual leadership just grabbed me. And I thought that is, that's the lane. That's the lane I've been trying to figure out because Sunday to Sunday, we send our people, they, they sit in a service on Sundays and then we send them back into the world equipped with a 25, 30 minute message. And that's all they've got. And there's, there's gotta be more. And so the whole capture of spiritual leadership was what grabbed me because if you can get a leader and you can influence a leader, you can change any organization. And we we call it raising the spiritual temperature. We want to raise the spiritual temperature of coaches, of principals, of mayors, of business leaders, of whoever in the marketplace. And so we, after going through what you guys did in 2017, we began a whole strategy of how do we pour spiritual leadership into people? And so we do some uh, coaching groups that I lead along with a lunch with a leader where we take a biblical character and break apart their leadership lessons over lunch and Chick-fil-A mm -hmm. sponsors it. We'll run 130 to 170 business leaders in our community come in once a month. We just finished the life of Nehemiah. We'll start the life of Queen Esther in the fall. And then we wow. have our podcast. And so, but our goal is if I can get, I heard a, I heard a guy say one time, if you can stick a thermometer in a leader's mouth, you'll get the temperature of the organization. Well, mm -hmm. I believe spiritually it's even more true. And if mm -hmm. that leader can go, God put me where he put me for a reason bigger than me, it can change everything for them. And our job Monday to Saturday is to help pour gas on that fire and equip them. And I'm telling you, it all goes back to that weekend in Jonesboro uh, that I that I was exposed to spiritual leadership. I'd never heard I love leadership, always loved leadership. I've just never thought about it that way. And when I took home your book um, mm -hmm. on spiritual leadership, it was it was a game changer for me. Wow. Well, I really appreciate all those free plugs there, Mike, on our, our <laughs> coaching workshop. And, our three and the sad part is I've already paid for the event. That's the sad part. <laughs> uh, well, uh, and, you know, there's a lot of pastors. Well, the, the, the leaders who come to your, your monthly uh, luncheon, uh, they, they don't all. They're not all members of your church, are they? Most they of them are. The last, the last stat we ran, seventy five percent don't go to our church. Wow, wow. Yep. Well, and I know there's a lot of pastors who would love to, uh, to be exposed to leaders like that. Either whether it's to minister in their own church or uh, just to have that kind of mm -hmm. impact on leaders around the community. But, uh, you know, th there's a lot of pastors that that would say, "Well, I'd, I'd love to do that, but how would I even?" Why would they want to come and hear what a, a pastor has to say? You know, this guy's a businessman in the in the, a, a significant uh, company in our neighborhood. Uh, why would he come to a luncheon led by a pastor? But how, mm -hmm. what would your advice be? Because I, I know there are a lot of pastors who would love to be able to, to, to do what you're doing. Uh, how, why has it worked so well for you, do you think? I think part of it is years of investment. 
we've invested in the community Mm. long obedient same direction probably they know us a lot of the leaders now that are in the community when you've stayed somewhere this long they Mm. were they were me years ago and they've just Mm. grown in their leadership and so there's a there's a friendship i think that's one piece of it i think being willing as a pastor to build relationships Monday to Friday mm. and not just focus. It was in one of your books uh, through our coaching process. There was a book called Transformational Coaching. Mm. And uh, I remember the author. I remember the statement that he made in the book. And he said, I believe the pastor of the next generation, this is where all this came from. I believe the pastor of the next generation doesn't just pastor his church. He becomes pastor of the community. Huh. And when I read that, I thought, that's it. Yeah. So I began to look at our communities of Ackworth, Kennesaw, Northwest Cobb, Paulding. I began to look at those as part of my church. So mm-hmm. what I do, investing in that leader, checking on them, praying for them, hosting lunches that don't have anything to do with any of this. There's no ask in it. It's a, it is a, what, what can I do for you? How can I pour into your leadership? And I think it, I think that is a big piece of it. I think the second piece of it is to have confidence that though I am not a business leader and don't portray or try to be one, Mm -hmm. but God's given us a template and a book on leadership. And he's left all these characters in there who he says were worth us knowing about their goods and their bads have Mm -hmm. confidence in what you're presenting to them. I'm not saying I am the answer to your problems. What I'm saying is God has answered to your problems and they're thousands of years old Uh and they're really, really relevant to Nehemiah's as relevant today is if you'd have read it 20 years after it was written. Yeah. And it, it just speaks to, and so I would say, one, get to know them and have confidence in the calling God's giving you. Secondly, have confidence in what God has to say to them through his word. And we use, like I'll interview a business leader at every lunch. So mm-hmm. we'll talk about how it applies let, and let them be the voice of how they live it out. Hmm. And you said Chick Fil A sponsors that. Is they that, what do. Does that mean? They give free free ch- chicken sandwiches, or they do a one? free. So, I in uh, December of 2017, I did a test run. So I said, "All right, and I have an idea a minute." So the most ideas never make it past make, make it past <laughs> this. But I said, "I want to invite in 20 people and give them a taste of what this is." Mm-hmm. And so he was one of the guys I invited and I put on a full, what I thought this could be. And we got to the end of it and he called me and he said, if you're willing to do that every month and North star is willing to host it, I will buy the lunches because he said, if, if leaders can get this, we can change our community. Wow. And so he's, I think last count, he was over 5,500 free lunches. Wow. That he's done, but he said, they're not, they're not a free lunch. They're an investment that I'm making into them so they can be who God created them wow. to be. And so it's been a neat, you can't be entirely certain whether they're coming for the free lunch or to hear from you. That's, <laughs> that's, that's what we're saying here. Well, I've heard that through the grapevine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's, that's wonderful. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of, I, I just think there's a lot of, of, uh, things to learn from that i you know mm-hmm. like just the fact that after years of successful ministry you invested several days in a workshop just to better yourself and mm-hmm. uh and there's some investment there of time and money and, and energy and um and that you're still reading you're still learning i, mm-hmm. I think that's awesome and uh and i i think there's and, and i think the other thing that i, I i'm impressed with is I think sometimes as a church, we just announce there's going to be a Bible study at this place. We'd like you to come. But but you had invested for years in the community where you were just being a blessing. And mm-hmm. uh, if you just kind of in a vacuum suddenly announce an, a new lunch meeting, uh, you can't be surprised when nobody seems That's right. coming. That's but right. If you bless them for years and given things to them and invested in them, then when you say, here's another thing now, we've, we've, we're really excited about how we can bless you this way, uh, people will 
will come in droves to amen they know you and so well you know I, we talked a bit about just what you've learned and um if you if you could wouldn't it be nice if we could hit rewind and take <laughs> a, get a fresh start at doing it the things that we've done in our life what are the what are the maybe the one or two leadership lessons you wish you'd known as you were starting out uh you wish someone had taken you aside and said hey mike listen here's let me give you some advice here as you as you start your ministry what what would you have wished you'd known earlier than uh, i mean it's it's better to learn it later than that's than right ever, but what are a lesson or two you'd love to have known as you started out i was blessed to have i so i was blessed to have a mentor who i think prepared me really well um mm -hmm. The number one thing, and I thought about this a lot last night, the number one thing would be how quick it goes. Huh. And I I look back now, I'm in my 50s, uh, my staff, a lot of them, they're in their 20s and their 30s. We were planning for our 25th anniversary, and I remember thinking, I'm, I'm not going to be here for the next 25th one. I, I'll, that'll be somebody else's game at that point. And it has gone so fast. And, you know, I think, I think that understanding, and I think part of it was the 1990s. That was the, that was the, you got to build it big. You got to get big. You got to go big. That was that era of church yeah. ministry. And I think we've really gotten out of that a little bit, which is good. So number one, how fast it goes. Number two, the joy isn't where you're going to end up. The joy is the people you're going to meet on the journey. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you can get that early in your life, the seasons of ministry are all going to look differently. The seasons of our lives and the templates and the the backdrops of our lives are all going to look different. But it's going to go fast. It's like parenting. Yeah, The days are long and the years are short. <laughs> and I have loved, and well, I've not loved every moment and I've not loved every day, but I have loved the journey. So it's been fun and it's gone fast, but the people are the best part of it. Yeah. It's you not know, the, known, it's not the win. I've known uh, business leaders as, and, and also pastors, the ones that it seems at times that have kind of crashed and burned or just not, not necessarily moral failures, but just uh, disappointing mm -hmm. tenures at a church. It seems like they've, they've often been the ones who missed that point that it, that's right. When you've got a staff to work with, you got a congregation to minister to. They're not. They're not just your job. That they're. They are your opportunity to give and receive a blessing by by journeying with very mm. special people. And and I I did that as a pastor. I just I thoroughly enjoyed the people I work with. And uh, even the some of the harder to work with people, I still could laugh with and joke with, even if we disagreed at times. Uh, because that's your life. That's who God's that's right. With. So if if you can't enjoy the place God's put you in, the people he's put you around, uh, you're going to miss out on a whole lot of stuff that uh, God put in your life for a reason. Um, well, that's great. My, I, you know, I, you've been in a church for a while now. And yeah. I'll tell you what, I, I, I had hoped I would do what you're doing. You're, you're living my dream. When I started <laughs> out, I, I wanted just to plant my life in a church for a long time and just sort of grow old with uh, mm -hmm. that, that church and, uh, you know, do, do a wedding and then dedicate a baby. And then one day do that baby's wedding and, you know, yep. just be there long enough to, to see people grow up under you. Um, but there, there's also some challenges with that. And one is, I mean, you're preaching to the same folks every week. Uh, you've used all your good stories a long time ago. All That's what I've been. I, I have heard. I've heard that. I've heard that. <laughs> now, how do you stay fresh mm. uh, to, when you're speaking and teaching and leading the very same group of, I mean, it's a growing group of people, but it's the yeah. same place. And you've been getting into the same pulpit for a long time. Uh, some of those uh, dear people have been with you from the beginning. Uh, if they've listened to you preach for 25 years and then they go hear you next Sunday, how, how do you stay fresh with, uh, and different and new? Or are you, or how do you keep from just giving them the same stuff you've given them for the last decade? Mm. I think that is where your fresh walk with the Lord is going to have to happen because the sugar sticks don't work. The, <laughs> the, 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 uh, 
quippy story that's going to work on the road when I travel may not work if I already told it last week. Yeah. And so that for I was interviewing um, a gentleman recently on my podcast, Alan Fadling. I don't know if you know Alan. He's he's written a book called You Would Love, by the way, The Unhurried Leader. And oh. he he makes a comment in there and he said, it's possible to have a packed schedule with an unhurried soul. Hmm. And so I was picking him a little bit on that. And he and he said something, and I think it, it applies to this. Hmm. He said, you know, in leadership, we always think I've got to give out. So I'm always taking my my coffee cup and I'm pouring it into other people. But he said, the reality of it is, Mike, that we're literally supposed to be the saucer, not the cup, hmm. that the more that gets poured into us, we just overflow it into mm. the saucer where we just let the overflow of our lives go into the people around us. And therefore wow. your cup's never empty. And I think that is the key to longevity. Mm. Now we all know we have dry seasons yeah, and we have, we have seasons where it is not fresh and relevant. And the best thing I can do during that season is tell them, Hey, I'm in a tough season too. Mm. And I don't have what I had three years ago. I'm in a, in, in it's that we're on a journey together and yeah. we're figuring it out as we go. And I say that all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I may tell you the same story. I apologize. It's not intentional, but I'm on a journey with you and I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get you there. We're all, we're all trying to get there. I'm just maybe a step or two ahead. And I'm all, I'm know, trying to get you. What, what kind of help would you give to preachers that, mm -hmm. in terms of like, an, a, you know, a fresh illustration? Because I, yeah. I, I know as pastors, that's, they may, you know, their, may, their walk with God may be growing too. But when it comes to illustrating that walk with God, yeah. uh, where, what do you do to find new material? Because uh, you, you've shot all those bullets. Uh, uh, what do you, is there any practical things you do just to get fresh ideas, fresh stories? What I read, what I listen to, and who I spend time with. I think that's where the stories come from. And mm -hmm. I spend a lot of times with leaders. And mm -hmm. so it makes stories easier because I know where they're at in their journey and in their life, which makes sermon applications on Sundays. I'm not guessing at where they are. I've been with them Monday to Thursday. I understand the challenges they're facing, which makes the illustrations easier in and what I have learned is the fresher I am, both with the Lord and with what I'm learning, the the better Sundays are because yeah. the illustrations are just I'm not force fitting an illustration. Yeah. God's God's word's not changing. My illustrations have to change with the audience that I'm with and not overthinking it. But but I think what can happen to pastors, and you've seen this, is we isolate ourselves and we are by ourselves all week. We don't really know what's relevant and going on in anybody's lives outside of us, me and my family. Yeah. And that's good. But the life that's going on Monday to Saturday is where we're trying to apply that to. And so I would say what I'm reading, I'm constantly reading. That's where the podcast helps me. Is and how because do you anybody... do that? How, how do you find, what, like, what's your reading schedule? Where, where do you find time to read? Early mornings. So I meet, my, my, I'm a weird, I'm a weird bird with this stuff, but <laughs> I meet six to one every day with people. So that is my, my, I am in meetings, groups, I'm with people six to one every day. So wow. when I'm out early in the mornings before my meetings start, I'm all that's when I get my reading done. Cause when the day starts, I don't have time. And yeah. then one to three thirty, four o'clock every day is when I do my sermon prep. Oh, okay. But that works for me. Other guys will go, man, I could never do that. But that works for me. And then typically, and this week I had to adjust because of some other commitments, but I'll I'll allot one full day with sermon prep. And mm. so normally during that sermon prep, I'll catch up on some other readings, but usually I'm in my text. Yeah. My pot, the beauty of the podcast has been my guest. Many of them have new books out. And yeah. so I'm reading constantly getting their stuff. Man, I'm always got a new book in my hand because 
I've got them coming up on the podcast, so I got to know it, yeah. and I've got to learn what's great going thing. on. Yeah, oh, it's been huge. Podcast. You're you're around uh, leaders with fresh ideas and insights all the time that that you're being exposed to, and so I, you know, I, like as you you and I both know that kind of just developing a podcast every week, you've got to be thinking about fresh That's ideas. Exactly and right, insights. and so that it goes both ways. You're you're giving out, but you're also taking in. And we live in a generation that that I didn't have when I was in my twenties and thirties, where I can tune into a podcast while I'm driving. It's a lot better than sports talk. We're yeah. never going to figure out why the Falcons won't address the offensive line. We'll never <laughs> figure out why the hockey won't make it in Atlanta. Everybody's going to argue about it. You know that's yeah. going to happen. But if I can listen to a podcast and glean while I was listening to one today, drive it in, mm. I got better in that twenty minute drive. Yeah. From a podcast where I could have been listening to music or the radio and I wouldn't have gotten better. So, yeah. you know, yeah, I'm, I'm like you now. I just every time I get in my car, I just run to Walmart to pick something up. I'm it automatically brings up a podcast. Uh, and uh, and and I find those just stimulate your thinking. They're so good. A minute drive running an errand and you're you've been exposed to some ideas you never thought about before. And a lot of times I go back and that's put me on a, a search now. I want to look this up and I want that's to exactly right. And, and there you go again. But well, you and I both have seen a lot of pastors, uh, mm. Christian leaders that have fallen, that have uh, that, that sort of uh, the the flame just went out. I mean, they were rising a big thing and uh, they were making the rounds and speaking here and there, writing books. And then all of a sudden they're gone or they're mm. great, greatly diminished. Um, and when you look particularly at pastors, you and I both had friends and people we knew respected that have gone through that. Um, I tell I, I just say anymore, I'm never really surprised. I'm often disappointed uh, mm -hmm. the, the person, but uh, but it's not shocking when it happens. It's just been too common. But when you look at particularly at pastors, what what are the dangers? And maybe it's not even moral failure, but just in general, when you talk about what what are the the dangers pastors face that could at, at the very least greatly diminish their ministry uh, if they're not careful. Oh, I think it's the danger every leader faces of believing the press clippings and and believing, you know, people know just a piece of your life. They don't they don't know all of you. Um, your family does, but yeah. but 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 everybody doesn't. And I and I just think it's that it's that daily reminder. Yeah, I made yesterday, but I've got to get through today. You know, I used to say this, and I say this all the time to our team because we're so young. I used to always want to win the race. Now I just want to finish the race. And I want to finish it. And I don't want to limp across the finish line. I want to finish it running and well. And I think it's, I think it is, it's, there's a term in sailing. A guy told me one time, he called it dead reckoning. He mm -hmm. said, you never get point A to B straight in sailing. You're mm -hmm. always dead reckoning with the winds. Mm -hmm. And I think in, in our spiritual lives, it's never losing eyes with Jesus. So we have a phrase we use all the time, lock eyes with Jesus every day, hmm. and you will like where you end up. Hmm. You will only get disoriented when you get your eyes off on you, on what people are saying about you, how well your church is doing, or how bad your church is doing. It could be any of those. But hmm. if, you, if you lose sight of who he is, you will— you will get off course yeah. and will not like the choices you make. And I think we you know, it used to be, I heard those stories and I thought, oh, that's awful. And how could they do that? And now I know their names and I knew them and they're friends. Yeah. And then I go, Lord, thank you. That's not me. And I don't yeah. want that to be my story and my ending. I want to finish. I want to finish well, which means staying fresh and knowing that, it's the Lord who does it, not us. The mm. good or the bad of it, it's his. And my job is to be faithful. That is my job, is to mm. be faithful to him, whether there's 4,000 people coming or 40 people coming. Yeah. It, the faithfulness is what he's going to reward, not and, the amount of people in the room. And sometimes it, it's it's that success that has made us not as dependent anymore. We, That's we, right. Uh, we look at the crowds of people coming to hear us preach every week and the staff working uh, with us, and we begin to think it's 
that somehow it's about me. And uh, you know, one of the things that's interesting, we ask our staff to do, and this started a few years ago. I ask our staff because this is the term I heard from every guy who fell, and this was the the one term. I felt like I was a rock star. I heard that from every guy. I reached wow. a point where I I felt almost invincible. And so one of our requirements for our staff and for me is you have to volunteer somewhere where you're nobody. Wow. Like it's not a church thing. Not, I'm not asking you to volunteer in the church because everybody knows you're here. Huh. So I'm a, I'm a high school community baseball coach. Hmm. And every afternoon in the spring, I'm putting on a hat. That's my background. I love baseball. I'm putting on a hat. I'm going to a dugout. I'm going to a bullpen. And after practice, I've got to take the trash to the dumpster. Mm -hmm. I've got to uh, pick up weeds on the warning track because there I'm not the pastor of a church. Mm -hmm. I'm just a high school community baseball coach. Uh, And it is a great reminder at the end of the day, you're really not that big a deal. (laughs) You're really not in it. It is a humbling thing. And it's a daily reminder that, you know what, if I, if that was my job, then I would be just as Christ honoring in that as I would be when I'm standing up and there's a light on me and everybody's making my world easy. Yeah, that's great. That's a great. It, it's been it's been a good thing for me, and it's been a really good thing for our team. Well, yeah, and I think it, it's true when they say uh, good leaders are going to be good followers. If mm, you're not mm. following anybody, uh, if you can't humble yourself and be the number two or number ten guy. Uh, then you're not going to be the number one guy very well. That's right. Um, And so I've always felt uh, uh, similarly that there ought to be some place of service um, where you just, you you don't forget what it's like to serve. And that's right. You're used to being served all the time. But uh, one last maybe question for you, Mike, that is just what I know you're always reading. You've already mentioned several (laughs) things here that you've learned recently and from podcast guests and different things, but uh, Anything, anything else that God's just taught you recently that has you kind of excited or, you know, I, I, you're probably like me. Sometimes you get a new thought and you have to mull over it for a while. And it's just mm-hmm. in the mulling phrase there where you're like, you know, there's a lot of meat there still that you haven't chewed off. You're just kind of working it over right now. But anything that's kind of hit Mike Lynch that uh, got you kind of excited and uh, intrigued, perhaps? Yeah, I I think so. I think a lot of what's hit me lately, and I think it's just coming from every angle, is I think there is a spiritual hunger now that I haven't seen in years. Mm. And um, that's exciting. And I think there's just something out there. And I don't know what that something is that God is doing in this generation, I thought that, you know, and I I don't know what all happened with the the Asbury deal and, but the the timing of that, the timing of the Jesus revolution movie coming out, the timing of there's just a heightened spiritual interest and you hear it. I hear it in conversations with leaders. I hear it in conversations where you're just sensing God is at work I don't really know what that means yet. So that is, is I'm as excited about that now as I have ever been. I was sitting with a a gentleman. He's a uh, high level executive with Coca-Cola this morning. We met for breakfast and, and hearing him, he's get, he gets it. Hmm. Yes. He's going to walk in there and he's going to represent his organization really, really well, but he's going to do it with a bigger mission. And, oh. and that people are getting that, that that's exciting to me because I think we've all been through the generation of we're forcing that on people and they're like, yeah, I don't understand. I don't understand how I can be a leader at work and my faith is for Sundays and I'll live out my faith in front of my family, but it really doesn't translate into making me a great coach or making me a great leader. And I see that now mm-hmm. and that is exciting to me. So I, I don't think it's a one thing. I think it's a big thing, and you hear it from lots of different areas and arenas. Uh, I'll be in Minneapolis um, in June of 2023 speaking with Christians working in sports. Mm -hmm. So it's people from the NFL, NBA, MLB, soccer, NHL, 
and they're all there together to go, all right, what is God up to in our worlds, in our platforms? And um, we do a, I do a Coaches Scouts Zoom every Monday morning for Pro Scouts, college baseball coaches. We're running 80 to 90 guys a week wow. from across America. We wow. just baptized a 70, well, close to 70-year-old Pro Scout came to know Christ through another scout. So here on our property, a, a major league baseball scout baptized another major league baseball scout. Oh. And we had a group of about 40 people and about 15 or 20 of them were pro scouts that drove in to see it and hear his story. And you're wow. like, all right, Lord, I don't know what you're up to, but it's going to be a, it's going to be a fun season. I think. Yeah. Wow. That's exciting. And, you know, there, there's certainly lots of problems out there today and it's that's right to focus in on things that are disappointing and uh, disillusioning. But uh, I think, I, you know, history is my thing. And when you, when you look at history, there's been lots of dark times, there's been lots of disappointing times, but, but it seems in every age th there's been a work of God nonetheless. Amen. And you can decide where you want to focus and where you want to be drawn to. But I think th there's been many a ministry that's been hijacked by negative stuff. And now that is what's driving them. That's what they think about, what they read about. Uh, and then there's some that have just said, no, I, I, I'm not going to invest my only life in just that negative stuff. There's where is God? And sure mm. enough, you start looking for where God is and you find him and you discover, oh my goodness, right here under my nose, uh, there's a work of God going on and I almost missed it. Um, that's right. And so good for you. I, that's exciting, especially in the sporting world. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, God has used you in some marvelous ways. And I, I find it always interesting if you, if your background, maybe in college was, uh, something like baseball, yep. Uh, then even years later, as a pastor, it's seemingly an entirely different kind of uh, calling, and yet God still pulls on, on those previous threads and experiences and uses them in fresh ways. And uh, Nothing's ever lost with God. <laughs> he, he has a way of maximizing everything in your life uh, That's and, right. and using it for his kingdom in some way. So mm. that's a wonderful word. Well, Mike, I knew that our time would fly. You're uh, a very interesting person with a lot going on, and I appreciate you giving us time this morning just to get on with us and um, lots of wisdom uh, there. We'll we'll uh, leave links uh, to Mike and his podcast, his church, uh, in the show notes so that uh, I know a lot of you will, would love to tune in. And he's, he's mentioned some things I think that you might be really interested in and following up on. And Mike's a wealth of uh, experience and knowledge, and God's using him. And so what a privilege to have you on with us today. Thank you. Enjoyed it a ton. Thanks a lot, Mike, and I uh, look forward to getting with you again in the future. Thanks for listening to the podcast. If this is something you enjoyed, it really makes a difference if you leave a review and a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. We always love hearing from our listeners, so email us at podcast at blackme.org.